701 awesome. for know. the benefit of the public and the planning commission. Our chair and vice chair, unfortunately, are absent this evening. According to Robert Rules, Robert's Rules of Order, we will need to nominate somebody to run the meeting from the existing planning commission that's here. So with that, uh, we would open the floor to nominations. I will nominate Martha to run tonight's meeting because she's the one that knows what she's doing. Probably. <laughs> I'll second that. Seconded by Allison. A little bit. All those in <laughs> favor? Take it. Aye. 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 Thank you. Martha, would you please assume the chair? You can do it from there. It's, <laughs> it's technical, but we want to be here right. All right. Okay, so having said that, uh, Martha will be chairing the meeting for us this evening. Uh, you have a copy of the agenda before you. Mm -hmm. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Hank. Uh, welcome to the Huntington Woods Planning Commission meeting, Monday, July 23rd, 2018. And the call to order is at uh, 7.03. Is that right, Hank? That'll work. Okay. Um, so we need to first take a moment to take roll call. And can we start with you, Kim, please? Uh, Kimberly Watts. Aaron Sullivan. David Schwartz. Mike Wright. Sheldon Cohn. Allison Iverson. And I'm Martha Schrode. Thank you very much. So uh, our first order of business is an approval of the agenda. And I do I hear? So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. And our second order of business is an approval of the minutes from June 25th, 2018. Uh, hopefully you've had a chance to go through these and we're looking to find out if you have any changes or corrections for the minutes. On page two, under the first, um, well, at the top on the motion to recommend the city. I believe I was the other nay with you, Martha. Yeah, I thought I thought so too. And I don't recall that Aaron I think you were a yay. But do you I don't know if you remember. I'm trying to catch up right, right at oh, the yeah. top uh, under the zoning um, prohibited occupation zoning ordinance. So you wish to add Watts to a nay. Yeah, and I, I think I went I think back we were and flipped. checked the video, and the video is okay, focused and on Sullivan Andy, but I'm pretty sure it's my voice. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Thank you, Kim, for pointing that out. Mm -hmm. Are there any other changes or corrections that need to be made? that this is a, a necessary one, but under the bottom, public participation. Again, uh, the, the, the line in there is Kim asked if everything fits. I think it was fits the standards, just to be clear on what that was. Okay. And I didn't have any others. Okay. okay, so if we're all set with that, A motion to accept. Move to approve as amended. Okay. Second. Thank you very much. Um, We're going to vote on it or what? Oh, yes, that's right. Sorry. <laughs> Just thought I'd ask. <laughs> um, all right, uh, so let's go ahead and vote. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. No opposed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Okay, so our next point on the agenda is a matter of introduction of a proposed amendment to the sign ordinance for the purpose of setting a public hearing for the August 2018 meeting. And Hank, did you want to talk about that? For yes, us? thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, what we're trying to do here is that we're trying to upgrade our notification process for the residents in the city. Currently, we have several marquee signs in the city, and those are all changed by hand whenever uh, some of the parks personnel have a chance to do it. So as a result, we're not as quick uh, to let the public notify if notifications as we could be. So having said that, uh, the city's proposing a new park sign for Scotia Park. Uh, why we're doing it there is obviously with the new renovations to Scotia Park, and being one of the most visible corners in the entire city, pretty much dead center in the city, 
it gives us an opportunity to see where this goes. What we're looking to do is to become more efficient. Uh, the ordinance is silent currently on this type of signage. It's going to be an electronic message sign. So uh, we want to make sure that we get a public hearing on it. Um, the amendment that you have was drafted by Carol Rosati, our city attorney, and Ben Carlisle, our planning consultant, uh, so that you have time to look at it. It regulates electronic message signs and is proposed is limited to the parks and recreation zone. So it would only be permitted on city property, the zoo, and Rackham, of course, with historic district approval. Those would be the only places that would use this particular type of signage. What we're asking for is the PC to hold the public hearing and see, we'll set it for next month, if it's the pleasure of the Planning Commission. And the goal for this meeting tonight is just to give you the materials and set the public hearing. When it comes to the August meeting, there will be a formal presentation on behalf of the city for the Planning Commission so that we can put everything out there and make sure that the public has an opportunity to do that. So based on the action of the Planning Commission tonight, I will advertise the meeting. Um, we will also use all the methods, including the antiquated boards that we have to notify the public that there is a meeting. And of course, everybody um, within the uh, 300 feet of the park will also get noticed because those are the people that would be most affected and we want to make sure that they have an opportunity to weigh in on this. So having said that, um, you do have the materials before you. It's not like we were looking for a discussion so much tonight. Um, if you did have some questions, I will try to answer them as best I can. But other than that, we would look for a motion to set a public hearing. Um, um, public participation. You can do or? public participation, but it's just setting a public hearing, and the purpose of the public hearing is to get the public participation. So if there's nobody here that wants to comment on it, you certainly should ask. Okay. But if there's nobody here that does, then it would be up to the commissioners if they had any quick or short questions. Okay. And other than that, we would look forward to the commission questions at the following meeting. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to participate or has any questions about this? Okay, we'll close public participation for this part. Um, why don't we go ahead and start with Kim and see if anybody has any comments? Chris? Isn't this, aren't we just approving this so that you can give us a full presentation? Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Any questions? Nothing. Okay. Question. Yes. It, it says, Electronic message portion sign will not exceed 30% of the total area. Is that for the whole screen or is that just That's the letters for the whole themselves? Sign. For the whole sign. Yes. Because, I, I mean, I can't tell from your illustrations that are attached here, but it, I, yeah, I don't know if that's 30% or not 30% or. Well, that's based on the dimensions that we have here, and again, at the following meeting would be when we would discuss that, and if anybody had any questions. Other than the materials that have been presented to you this evening, um, what I would tend to like to do is to give you as much as I can ahead of time mm -hmm. so that you can have your questions, but at the 30%, that was figured out by um, Ben Carlisle. Okay. All right. I'll hold my questions until the public meeting. Okay. Thank you. Allison, any questions? Okay. Uh, I just have one question, Hank. Um, mm -hmm. With regard to the design, is this this is what they are looking to do, or is this just an example of what might be No, done? this is what they are looking to do. Okay. So I have to hold my comments as to my well, opinion? Well, you don't have to hold your comments. It's just that it would be more appropriate to have your comments when we have the public here to, that might want to discuss that, or if you had a point that you want to bring up. It would be beneficial for the public to hear it. And the only way to hear it now is on, on that. But while with the next meeting, I do anticipate people being here because we will be noticing people. Okay. All righty. Well, I'll hold my thoughts until then. Um, I do have some questions about the design. Uh, but other than that, um, I, I guess we need to go ahead and make a motion. Make a motion to uh, set up public hearing. Second. All in favor? Any opposed? Okay, it passes. All righty, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. And our next item on the agenda is to review um, the new house plan for Joshua Cascade at 8601 Hendry. 
I, have, I think you asked I have one. Chris Morgan. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, you're right. I Thank skipped you. ahead. Um, that would be... Chris um, was feeling left out. I'm sorry, Chris. And there you're I'm sitting there, and I'm I know sorry, you were not. <laughs> it's just I'm kind of nervous because I don't do this very often. You do well, me too. So there we go. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're going to back that up, and this is a matter of site plan review for an addition by Chris Morgan and Associates at 8375 Hendry. Yes. Okay. Um, did you want to go ahead and, or Hank, would you prefer yeah. to go first? Whatever, whatever Mr. Morgan's pleasure is. Uh, basically, I can give you a little bit of introduction. Uh, Mr. Morgan, go ahead. I do have a little bit of a PowerPoint to go over, and then, of course, he can add to anything that I have. So as a way of introduction to this, Mr. Morgan is not the original contractor on this job. The original contractor on this job uh, failed to finish, and um, as you'll see in my presentation, kind of left the homeowners in a, in a rough state. Mr. Morgan has agreed to take over the job and as a result has made some changes. The original plan was approved by the Planning Commission and commenced. And uh, Mr. Morgan found himself really in somewhat of the unenviable situation of having to clean this up. So um, there was a, a lot of uh, structural, as I understand it, that had to be revisited. Um, which would be the concern of the building department. But Mr. Morgan will, uh, can give you a presentation and a, a little bit of a dissertation on what he intends to do. And then I'd be happy to show you on the PowerPoint, put it on the screen so the residents can also see it. Okay. okay. So, um, as Hank said, I'm kind of taking this project over. Um, the last two times this project came before you guys, it was going to be, this house is going to be made into a kind of a modern prairie. Um, the budget just wasn't realistic and so we're taking a step back even though the roof this side of the house has already been demoed uh, the second floor the roof's gone um, we're looking at what can we do to give them still the space they need but do it in a more affordable way so with that said what we're going to do is keep this as a colonial but and keep the main symmetric portion of the house right here um, and just try to give it more of a modern flair because they really do like tend towards the modern look of a house. So we're going to use some dark gray colors, dark bronze cladded windows, um, some dark gray cement board siding, and a nice new mahogany, stained mahogany front door, upgrade the columns on the front porch, um, and, then, and then just complement what's there. Um, with the addition, so we're adding a master suite addition and an additional bedroom, which will maintain a four bedroom house, which is what it is today, but just reorganizing everything. We step the addition back. This is the guest bedroom, and I'll show you that on the floor plans. Uh, we have the guest bedroom, and then it steps back. Behind that's the master suite, and then the master bathroom here. So we worked on reducing the mass and reducing the roof heights and stepping it back as we went. Um, we're going to put a new roof on the garage and raise the pine line up to create some horizontal lines across here, do a new eight foot garage door, um, new dark gray shutters. Those will stay vinyl as a plan for right now. Um, and then we'll be replacing all of those. So let me show you um, the other side. So here, you can see the back of the house. So this is the addition right here. We're adding, so this is the master bathroom, this is the back windows of the bedroom, and then the, these are all existing windows and doors that we'll be replacing. Um, I do have a small cantilever here which provides a little covering for these two French doors, as well as gives us a little more room for the master bedroom and allows me to create this reverse gable which gives a little a nice detail I think on the back of the house. Um, this is the second level and again you can see here so here's bedroom number four that we're adding and the master suite that we're adding um, we're taking this bedroom and converting it into a walk-in closet and a hallway to get to the addition and then this tiny little bedroom they had we're going to make that into a laundry room um, can you see from where yeah, I'm saying? Okay. I can see um, and then everything else is going to stay the same on this level. And then on the main level, really all we're doing is a renovation. So 
we're going to take this existing space here and kind of reallocate it, create a nice uh, mudroom, remodel this bathroom, create a walk-in closet and ante space, changing the traffic flow because right now you kind of come through here. We're going to open up the wall of the kitchen and create a snack area here. And so this will kind of encapsulate the changes here. And then, of course, the garage will remain the same size, just the uh, roof will be higher and a different, a different type of roof. And I will add to part of this, by doing it this way, and even with a cantilever, is I'm trying to utilize more of the existing structure. The previous design, the structure was not well designed and, and was cost, going to cost a lot of money to do it correctly. So um, with that, I don't know if Hank wants to take over, I can ask you. Yeah, and then we can, uh, if you would, oh, thanks, Allison, I really appreciate that. Okay, so here's what we had originally, and this was the uh, Hoff residence, and you can see that this is the area here that Mr. Morgan is focusing on. So you have that, uh, and then this is what the house that was pre previously approved. It was kind of a, a darker, a um, little bit different. The front entryway changed drastically, and uh, the whole house took a different form from what it is. That was what was previously approved. This is what was left by the builder when he left the site, actually a little bit more. The entire garage in this area here are ripped off and left open. As a result, they're living with a blue tarp for a roof. So. Mr. Morgan came in and came in with this design here, which does a few things for this structure. One is with the column changes and rebuilding this area in through here, yet keeping it the two-story entrance that the house originally had, it keeps the focal point on the front portion of the house, which is what it was designed to do. So architecturally, um, it's, it's getting back to the normal, the original type of architecture for the house. Then, in the addition area here, he stepped back this area and then stepped back this area further to provide architectural relief and texture to the front facade of the house. Uh, the gable from here will die into the uh, roof and back, as you can see, and the house will look like it's pretty much always been there, which is a nice detail. The rear of the house, as he mentions over here, this is the rear addition, this comes out. Uh, now that we do have cantilevers that are approved, this area here, as we've done in the past, actually is a double feature. One is it provides more interior square footage, and it also provides a little bit of shelter over the doors that are about the back of the house. So it does have a dual purpose with that. This area here are the sides of the house. This is the area of the house here that's original to that side of the house on the left side. This area here you will see, and as you can see on the right side of the house where the addition occurs, this area here is really minimized, so the architectural intrusion on the right side of the house has been completely minimized, and you have this way step back from the front. As a result, the massing and scaling has certainly been addressed by the proposed plan. Having said this, again, Mr. Morgan went through the plans, so I won't uh, go other than to say that on this level here, there's nothing really changing other than what's inside. On this level here, there is a substantive change, but by doing so, and you can see where the front of the house is, you have your minimal step back here, then you have your big step back on the second. Again, provides the architectural relief and changes on this particular floor. The house meets all the guidelines and setbacks, as the first plan did as well. There are no variances required. The house was started under the old ordinance, and the new plan is under what was committed to at that point in time. I verified with the city attorney that they can be over what is currently allowed by the original plan and no variance is required because the plan was vested at the time that they started it prior to the uh, prior to the uh, Mr. Morgan taking over. So the original contractor did default leaving the project in an unfinished and the house is fairly well torn apart and again Mr. Morgan has decided to step in with a little bit more modest plan that has a little bit more architectural detail and pop, if you will. Having said that, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer us. I'm sure Mr. Morgan would. If uh, he'll also, if he wants to correct or add to anything that I've said, he should feel free to do so. Wow. <laughs> this is <laughs> what? <laughs>
Please, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I imagine um, people have questions. Uh, so why don't we start with Kim? Yeah. I, I think I probably understand the, the reason for it, some of the choices. But um, So the step back, backs prevent you from using brick. Yes, correct. Then, yeah, correct. yeah. Um, it, I think it's a a good kind of in-between solution from what they had and what you're trying to work with. Thank you. Um, Hank, where are the bonus assumptions? They don't come into play because he's under he's the under maximum. The he's under the size of the square footage of the house that was previously approved. So that's when I asked for the city attorney. The plan that was previously okay. approved was under. So as a result, Mr. Morgan only has to meet that criteria, which he's done. Gotcha. Okay. All right, thank you. Nothing for me. Uh, nothing. You're doing thank what you got to do. <laughs> thank you. Uh, nice save. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember approving this. I think it was a gorgeous design, but yeah. uh, I feel bad for uh, the homeowners. Uh, yeah, I think it's good save. It's a nice in between. Thank you. Um, question. Uh, you're not putting siding on over anything that's now brick. No, no. I mean, layering it over it, not above it. No, no. Okay, got it. Because um, all new structure, right? Yeah. Anything that's siding is new, Correct. new structure. Correct. Okay. Um, what was it, Hank? What was it? Do you know what the square footage was on the original? The original plan, plan was uh, thirty-nine something. I believe Mr. Morgan's in thirty-seven something. Yeah, we're at right. thirty-seven ninety. Yeah. And and what is what would be the new ordinance limit? The new ordinance limit that does not come into play would be about uh, 35, somewhere in there. I thought we came 35. up with 3685. We were yeah, thinking with the bonuses. There. Yeah. So we're about 105 over. From yeah, they're about okay. 105 over. I'm just. Bonuses. It was 3954. Just wondering. That level of increment doesn't uh, mm -hmm. concern me. I think it's a nice plan. Mm -hmm. Sorry. That's okay. I'm done. Um, I, I think you did a great job uh, saving the design, and I uh, appreciate the way you integrated and used color to kind of pull it all together, you know, Thank with you. the columns and the shutters and your hardy siding. So um, I, I think you did a great job. Um, okay, so um, we need a motion to approve. Public. Oh, sorry. Public participation. Is there anyone <laughs> in the audience who would like to have any comments or questions? Okay. Close public participation for this part. Um, and we need a motion. Motion to approve as presented. Okay. All in favor? Uh, no opposed? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. If at this time we could give a minute for Mr. Morgan to gather his things and for the Sir. Youngs and uh, company, <laughs> if you will, and entourage to uh, get their stuff in order here.
agenda item is matter of site plan review for a new house by Joshua Cascade at 8601 Hendry. Okay. Um, did, did you, would you like to do your presentation well, I, can, I can give a brief introduction and then let the youngs take over if okay. you would like. Again, you know, um, we like to hear everything rather than less. So, right. Having said that, back before you again this evening uh, is uh, Young Young Architecture along with Mr. Funky from Michael Duels uh, and of course Josh Cascade is back. Um, basically what they've done is they've completely revised the plan for the house that they had submitted to you last month. Uh, previously they needed three variants, all substantive. And now by virtue of the redesign, they only seek a maximum house size variance. Uh, they've dropped over a thousand square feet off the plan from the last time. And uh, if you take a look at it, um, the neighboring house which was built uh, to the, the for one down the street to the south received several variances. Uh, construction for new projects sometimes do need variances, and again, this only needs one. The maximum height has changed, it's come down. The front yard has actually moved back a little bit, so they've situated the house further back on the lot. The side yards comply, the rear yard more than complies, and the lot coverage is substantially less than what's allowed. Uh, the maximum house size was, uh, is by code 4412. Last time they were in, they were here with 5,872, and now they're here with 4,785, which represents a 1,087 square foot reduction from what they had. The garage size last time was 950 square feet, and Mr. Cascade is back now in full compliance at 650 square feet and no longer needs that variance. The accessory structure also was reduced and eliminated the variance need for that as well. So what they've done basically is the three main concerns have been addressed to the point where two of them are no longer necessary to be concerns, and one has been reduced uh, substantially um, from what they were asking for last time. So having said that, the house on the one side is, uh, of them is 5,711 square feet. The house as proposed by them is 4,785. The house on the other side, the north neighbor is 3968. So uh, for comparative analysis, the proposed new house at 4785 is 926 square feet smaller than the neighboring house at 8577 Hendry, and the proposed house is larger than the neighbors at 8621, which is on the other side and sits at 3968, and it's smaller by 817 square feet. So the average of the two neighbors' houses is 4839, and the proposed house is less than the average of the two. So that's kind of what you have with that. Uh, again, the size question relates to whether or not you feel that the house is out of character for the neighborhood. Um, but at a proposed 5,872 square feet, the house was 25% over the maximum house size. Now with the redesign, the house is 8% over the maximum house size and went from 4, 1,460 square feet over to 463 square feet over, which while still over, represents a significant reduction. The Cascades have provided an extensive landscape plan and tree study for review as well, which I have included with your materials. Um, you know, points to consider as to the amount and types of variances needed. Now that there's a maximum house size is the only thing that is needed. The Planning Commission would have to approve this project subject to the ZBA granting of that particular variance. Uh, in additional notes, uh, they have the driveway. I've clarified with the uh, road crew, they're using what's called a mountable curb, which means their driveway can shift back or forth and not affect the road construction on Henry at all, which was originally a concern for us. With a mountable curb, their concrete will just meet up to the curb level. So that's, that was, uh, there was a sense of urgency in dealing with that, but because of the style of curb chosen for Hendry, it's no longer a concern. And again, you've been supplied with the materials, the tree study that Mr. Cascade has commissioned, and uh, basically what you have before you are just, are, are all the materials that the Planning Commission had concerns about and were addressed by the Youngs and Mr. Cascade 
and also by Michael Duell and Associates, who has a representative here this evening as well. So if you have any questions um, on this, I can show you briefly what I've done here, so you can kind of see if you would mind, please, Allison. If you have questions at any point in time, please feel free to stop me. What you have here, oops, I'm sorry, what you have here is a rendering showing you this house, how it fits into the landscape. You have the house to the left, which is 8577, and over here would be 8621. Note that the rendering of the house here, while this is prominent front and center, it should be as that's the focal point of the house, does not show any foundation or front yard plantings so that you can get a better view of the actual house. You should be aware that the front of that house will be softened significantly by the landscape or the extensive landscape plan that's been provided with you with your materials. This is what we were looking at here when uh, Mr. Cascade went ahead and commissioned and had every tree gone through and uh, assessed for uh, conditions and that type of thing on this particular property. So he had every tree categorized whether or not it's good, bad, what kind of shape it's in. And again, that was included in your packet, but it shows the extent that Mr. Cascade has gone to to satisfy some of the concerns of the Planning Commission. This here shows the landscape site plan, uh, the site plan with the landscape included, so you can get an idea of what plantings you can expect around it. As you can see, the house and the property will be entirely bordered with materials, some added, some currently present. And the house all the way around, including the front, including the green area up and through here, will have foundation plantings. It will significantly soften the impact of the house as it tends to meld into the neighborhood. Again, landscape plans are great, but the best time to view a landscape plan is not now. It's two years from now after you see them starting to grow into and the plans start to take shape. So that's one of the concerns that you might take in, or one of the things you might take into consideration when you're looking at this. Here what we're looking at is the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the elevations of the house here. We've got the side elevations here, uh, and this shows the side here which faces the north. And again, there will be some, this house here, this is the garage area that you have in here. This shows the garage is significantly smaller than what was there. And on the other side, you have the other view here, which shows fenestration and shows how the house was designed. Your front and rear elevations here, what they've done is they've taken this, added architectural interest by putting in the second floor, adding the eyebrow window to the front, and the full glass window in the front. Please be aware that there is a grade line here, so some of that you will not be seeing, but it does allow a significant amount of natural light into all floors of the house. This right here is the upper level, and what they've tried to do is to try to introduce a lot of glass area in through here to allow for natural light. They've allowed for a lot of open areas to below, which means that it's, it has a flow, the house has a nice airy feeling to it, and this is different than what you've seen the last time. And then here you go to the main floor and you see what they have in through here. What they've done here is they've taken and they have what's called uh, the courtyard or the farm for the utilities in the back area of the house. So I want to point out this because they've really done a decent job of going through this and making sure that this won't be offensive sound-wise, sight-wise, or anything. And I'm going to back up here and show you that back here not only do they have a wall around it, but they've also put plantings around the outside of that which will serve a dual purpose. One is it'll hide the wall that's there, and the second is it'll also serve to help deaden the sound. Again, knowing that all the appliances, while they're running, will have to maintain a 65 uh, decibel or less at the lot line. Um, that's a big help in doing so, along with the plantings over here. So the neighbor to this side at 8621 should be able to hear uh, certainly well less than 65 decibels. And being on the other side of the house, this neighbor over here is unlikely to even hear them. So having said that, I'll move back to where I was. And that's what the completed project will look like. If you take a look at it again without the plantings, they have made a huge effort to save the trees that are here. Um, the neighbor over here was in this afternoon and expressed satisfaction with the project. He said they might want to move the driveway over just a little bit. Um, I don't know whether that's true or not, but it won't matter because of the mountable curb that can be handled at a later date it will not require a visit back to the Planning Commission. So other than that, if you have any questions of myself um, 
or the yums, you go right ahead and ask. But I'll let him go now that I've talked for a while. <laughs> Thank you, Hank. Again, Todd Young with Young Young Architects. And again, Mr. Cascade brought um, Michael Duell's company on board. And we have Patrick Funky um, here to answer any questions regarding the landscape plan and the tree survey and site drainage and any other uh, site concerns that uh, you may have or questions that you may have. So yes, we um, it's an entirely new house. There's not a wall in the same spot. Um, and we did take um, about 1,100 square feet out of the home. Um, uh, so many things happened uh, to the scale and the size of the home. Of course, it, it, it did reduce the scale of the house. Um, massing of the house is much smaller. Um, Hank hit on some of the key areas, but um, the house width went from 96 feet to 84, so it's 12 feet um, narrower from north to south, which is actually a, a couple of feet narrower than the home to the north, uh, the Akers residence. Uh, we are uh, reduced reduce the height by two feet, so we're a couple feet lower than the house to the south. Um, the front yard um, on the Acker side was moved back two feet on the Saxe side. The south home were five feet further back. Um, the side yard setbacks are much larger. Uh, we were 33 feet. We're only required seven or eight, and we were 33. Now we're 42 feet uh, between our home and the Acker's home on the north. That we reduced it by nine feet, and we're 22 feet from the Saxe's home on the south. We reduce that by three feet, and we're three feet further from the rear yard. Um, so we have almost 50 feet between homes on the north and about 40 feet between homes on the south. Uh, Patrick's done a great job of, of uh, helping us preserve the trees that are in good shape and that are um, uh, worth preserving, and so he will speak to some of those issues that we've done. Um, the home is still character the same as before. It's a soft contemporary a very transitional home. Uh, materials are very common to, to the community. Red brick, uh, cement plaster, limestone color cement plaster, a dimensional brown asphalt shingle, uh, bronze materials for the window, dark bronze for the window, dark bronze for the small metal roof that's over the front entry. Um, a lot of glass, we do have a lot of glass. The big piece of glass in the front is to the family stairwell. Um, so it's, it's a very um, detailed, um, it's somewhat sophisticated, but casual home in many ways too. Um, as, as Hank said, a lot of daylight into the home, open plan, uh, very accessible to the rear yard. The front is a little more conservative, um, and it's a quiet house. It's not trying to shout. The palette of materials is very quiet. The hip roof, as I explained at the last meeting, is very soft and reduces the scale of the home. And um, I, I hope you won't just drive by and miss it at this stage, but it is, it's pretty background. Um, and uh, there will be tremendous amount of plant material being added to the site, as well as hardscape um, that Patrick can explain some of his uh, great ideas. Okay, if I may, uh, Patrick Funky, Michael Duell and Associates. We're landscape architects. We've worked, uh, some of you may be familiar with us, several projects in the community. We're excited to have this opportunity to work for the Cascade family and with YMY &Y architects as well. So uh, Young and Young brought us on board with some of the concerns that uh, the commissioners may have had about preserving uh, some of the majestic trees that are there. So uh, we actually visited a site with the registered arborist and, and analyzed each tree and you have that in your package. Um, and we kind of went through and graded each tree, you know, good, fair, poor, really it's, everybody's familiar with that, but wanted to focus uh, on the good trees that are there and, and work with Young and Young to modify these setbacks. The setbacks are modified based on trying to save these larger trees. So, uh, for example, uh, a lot of good, great effort was put forth to preserve these three large oaks in the front. Uh, we've redesigned the entry walk to accommodate uh, the drip line of the existing tree. We did pull uh, the driveway further south uh, away from the north property line but keeping in mind not pulling it too far south to encroach into the drip line of this oak tree and then we, we want this is the smallest of the three oak trees in the front but we still felt it was very important to the character of the neighborhood as well with all the large oak trees to save that and then one of the major uh, 
really the stud tree of the whole property is this tree right here on the back. So the house was re reconfigured, the walkout terrace below was minimized to preserve the root zone, and we did an overlay of the existing home as it relates to try to minimize disruption of that. So really focus was on trying to preserve all the really nice trees. For example, we have a couple of beautiful Japanese maples right at the end of the parking area that they'll be able to enjoy every day. And everybody's familiar with Japanese maples with the red leaves and everything. So we felt it was really important to preserve those as well. Unfortunately, the perimeter of the site is a lot of junk. We have American Elm, Buckthorn, Mulberry, and the utility company has uh, done some significant um, whacking of all the, you know, pruning of the trees. So we would like to remove those. So a lot of nuisance species back there, the mulberry, the birds and stuff. Um, and we'd like to fortify that with a, a four season evergreen screen. Um, so that was our focus. Um, so we, we, we wanted to set all of the site design. One other important thing is we preserve all the trees to the north other than two ailing spruce trees that have a canker disease, according to our arborists. Um, we're, we're saving all of the common shared trees between the Ackers and our property that are existing in there, as well as to the south as well. We do have some mulberries and cherries here. It, you know, there's a lot of wildlife out there, birds and things. We felt it was appropriate to save some of that and just embellish it with some new uh, flowering shrubs and, and evergreen trees. So I think we've um, come up with a very organized plan. Um, one other important aspect of, the, of our plan is a retaining all the uh, proposed uh, storm drainage. We submitted that to uh, the city last week as well. Um, essentially, we came up, uh, we, we um, hired Spalding D. Decker civil engineers, and um, we created and submitted a drainage of what is currently there and what we're proposing. And what we're proposing is less stormwater drainage running off the site than is currently present from the, uh, the home now. And we're doing that with very simple uh, absorption fields in four locations throughout the site where we'll collect roof water, driveway water, and put them into a crushed stone uh, underground uh, detention basin, essentially. So uh, we have a very sandy site here. I've, I've noticed animal holes out there uh, with lots of sand. So the oaks are thriving because of the sand as well. Um, so all our new plant material should do quite well as well. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Okay. Um. I, I just want to add one thing. Um, and we won't do what we did last time, which was talk a long time. Um, but um, we heard you last time. As I said to you, that was a total education for us. Um, the first thing we did is walked out of here and said, we need to hire an arborist and a civil engineer right away. Why are we killing all these trees? And this is a city with a water problem, so we need to hire a civil engineer. And I want math that says we're going to, because there ha I, I went on the internet. There are tunnels and things you can do to make sure you absorb water. And um, they said, well, there's a ton of sand. You already absorb water. And I said, well, we're doing construction. Let's absorb more. So, I mean, that is the attitude we bring to this. Um, we worked hard on it. We want you to feel good about us being here, but we want to feel good about it too. And it's, so it's as much for us. Um, the one thing I'll say is we also studied why you gave us that feedback last time. I actually went to 2016 and watched your rebroadcasts. October 24th, 2016, as you debated the new ordinance max cap rules for, for two hours. And I sent it to China and had it transcribed. but. <laughs> um, I, I agree with everything you said. I don't think if I, I don't want a big house on a small lot. I now know what mass, massing means. I, I don't think boxiness is appropriate. Um, and I wouldn't put this house on a lot that was a quarter acre. Um, so I agree with everything you said. Um, but I also went to um, the property gateway for Oakland County. It's very cool. And I printed out zone 1B. And I counted 119 houses. That could be off by one or two. And 91% uh, are a quarter acre. Um, but ours is almost an acre. And I do feel, in, my, in our own defense, that we're an outlier. Um, so while I agree with the zone ordinance, I totally 
totally agree with the spirit behind it. Statistically, I definitely walked away saying, wow, our property is an outlier standing next to several of the other properties that are also outliers within this zone. That it's very big, that the houses are all unique and not, not the same, but different and cool in their own right. And, and frankly, the lots are big. And, and you know, I believe that where there's a statistical outlier in a zone, that is a good reason for a statistical variance. Um, so I just wanted to share that we listened, but we are asking you for your support so we can move forward and be your neighbor. Um, and we do feel, I had to say this, um, like the coach for the Pistons used to say that we've been playing the right way. Um, so hopefully you will too. It was Larry Brown. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, we'll open it up to pu public participation. Is there anyone who needs to speak? Why don't, why don't you come on forward, tell us your name and your address, please, sir. Sure. My name is George Erdstein at 8572 Huntington Road, which is the <clears throat> block uh, actually behind. Um, my question may be an academic one. Uh, I think it's a, a beautiful home, uh, well treated. I think it's going to fit in very nicely. However, um, my understanding of what a variance requirement is based on is a hardship, and I want to put a little background here. I chaired both the Planning Commission and the Zoning Board of Appeals here many years ago. So uh, I have a background here. There is a hardship that's required that does not come from the owner, but it should come from the property. There should be a defect in the property that requires uh, some variance. And I haven't seen um, that's shown here yet. It's a beautiful home, it, it will fit in, but academically I'd like to know how the Planning Commission and subsequently the Zoning Board of Appeals will look at this. Yes, uh, there's a quite a bit of reduction from what you proposed last month, but is that what you should be looking at? Or should you be looking at the ordinance to start with and why it's different from the ordinance? You worked very hard to put this ordinance together. Why can't this house fit within the square footage? You may say 500 square feet, that's a lot less than 1,500 square feet, but it's 500 square feet. Where's the hardship? Uh, I'd like that addressed as, uh, just as a citizen. It may be academic because I know it'll fit in, but I think it should be addressed. Thank you. Anybody else who wishes to come forward? Is this the end of public? Uh, no, we're still. Um, well, I'll address it. Um, this is an academic for us. This is, uh, you weren't here last time. You guys know my story. Maybe you were, I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, all I can say is this is a life changing move we're planning. Um, that was hard for us last time. And we, we're, we, this is important. This is not academic to us. Um, I'm not a lawyer, um, but I can tell you again that um, we have three kids. We have aging grandparents who live out of state. They're gonna visit us. We're both gonna work at home. My industry doesn't exist here. We need offices. Um, you know, I don't know if that fits within the definition of hardship. I would never, ever look someone in the eye and tell you I have any hardship, um, to be honest. But I don't know the legal definition. But all I can do is implore you to look at the spirit of what the rules are. Um, the, the fact that we bought this house um, and the ordinance just changed in January 8th. We're 16% below, below the prior ordinance. We are 7% above. And if you look at the intent, the 8% of house we're adding is within the space of the box that the community would see. 
Um, it wouldn't change the frontage. It wouldn't change the side space. Mm -hmm. It would change nothing except for second floor space that we have within this existing box. So that's all. Madam Chair, um, even though public participation is not closed, perhaps I can add something that might help um, for clarification. The Planning Commission cannot grant variances. Conversely, they cannot deny a plan because it needs a variance. What they can do is they can deny plans that don't meet, that don't fit, <coughs> excuse me, that don't fit within the architectural compatibility and several other criteria of which you're aware. So I just want to be very clear that at this point in time, this should not be a debate as to whether or not you're going to approve a variance because that's not the function of the Planning Commission. That's the function of the Zoning Board of Appeals. So having said that, uh, while you want to take a look at these things, um, it should not be paramount in your decision. Thank you, Hank. Is there anybody else who wishes to come forward during public participation? Hi. Hi there. Uh, Mark Nakasher, 25505 Wareham. I've lived in the neighborhood for over 14 years. I've known Mr. Cascade for over 30 years. Uh, I've sort of been along with this process with him and have seen what's, what's gone on and I've been so impressed with, with the painstaking work that he's done and that the people he's working with have done to make sure that this is a home that does fit within our community. Uh, I have full support of everything that they're doing and, and think that it would be um, truly a benefit to our neighborhood and our community, as well as their family would also be a benefit to our neighborhood and our community as well. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to come forward? Okay, we'll close public participation. All right, uh, we'll go ahead and hear from the commissioners. Uh, the, the two things that I heard during the last Planning Commission when we review, reviewed plans that were concerns for both commissioners and public were the overall scale, um, that it also included how far back that house sat mm -hmm. in comparison to neighbors, and um, the trees or loss of trees and vegetation mm -hmm. on the site. And from what I see and hear tonight, I do believe that you've done a great job in as a team addressing oh, those you. concerns. Um, as Hank said, we can't address the zoning variants, mm -hmm. but based on the plans that I'm seeing and the spirit in which you've approached it, I, I'm pleased with what I'm seeing. Thank you. Hank, um, again, just to make sure I know the numbers, the max permitted 4412, yes. I'm assuming includes all bonuses? That's correct. And I didn't see a itemization of the bonuses that this design would earn, although I'm sure they're significant. Yeah, what we did was that we actually got the revisions based on the fact that they had a month <laughs> to do a complete redesign on the house. We got the plans. What I did was I went through and I went through the uh, lot size bonus, which they maxed out on. Sure. And I went through the uh, bonus for uh, the architectural features. And uh, a lot of what they did was they didn't do the step-ins and they didn't have the attached garage, but they hit everything else. So as far as that, they were able to get three set, you know, they were able to get all the architectural bonuses. And based on the style of the architecture, and this is where the, the intent was originally with this, if you're true to the style of architecture and you're designing something like, for example, a Tudor Revival, you have certain details that you want to keep in. You'll have higher peaks. The peaks will peak out at anywhere from 32 to 35 feet in the city of Huntington Woods. They'll have swept roofs and arches and that type of thing. When you're designing a soft contemporary, what you're looking to do is to change the planes. You're looking to allow for a lot of glass. They hit the fenestration tremendously. They hit the fenestration. So, um, and I, and I, so we gave them that administratively if you wanted to go through each one individually that's fine but uh, based on the fact that they had the plan they submitted it they were way back and every single thing that they have is behind their allowed building envelope mm -hmm. was why we did that so having said that it's not a line item thing in the report like I would usually do based on time that we had to do it 
but uh, having said that, this plan represents a significant departure from the original plan, and uh, that's that's why you have to decide whether or not you feel that it's worthy of moving forward to the zoning board of appeals. Okay, so we wouldn't get the detached garage, you wouldn't get right. the second floor setback, but you right. would get architectural interest and fenestration. Bonuses. There's no question. Yep. There's no question. Okay. Um, so how do I phrase this properly? So. Um, <laughs> The intent of the square foot calculations was to manage massing. Yes. And I am satisfied that with the size of the lot being an outlier, that the massing issues are being addressed, even though the square foot exceeds the permitted, and it makes sense to go forward to the ZBA. Okay, thank you. David? Um, well, I agree. It certainly sounds like the property's an anomaly of sorts. Um, but, Hank, I had a question for sure. you. Sure. Because I've never actually seen a utility yard before. Um, <laughs> normally, you know, when we look at the side air conditionings, we make sure everything's in order, but it never matters because, worst case, they have to throw it in the back. In this case, there's a utility yard. Does that mean everything is in order? Yes. Okay. It's behind the portion of the house, and as you remember, we changed the rear yard definition to follow the rear contour of the house and this would do that. Okay, so no concerns. Then. Right, the reason that I brought it up was because they took the extra effort to make the noise insulation and to make it visually less imp impeding, so. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't here last time. I obviously reviewed the plans and some of the discussion, but this certainly seems like a much better reduction and I kind of agree with what Aaron says. This accomplishes the goal, although we did go through the square footage allotments at length, <laughs> and it's with hesitation that I would want to do anything above those. Um, but I understand what you're doing, and I get it. Hank, quick, quick question. Sure. Um, since I sit on the ZBA, if I vote tonight, do I not vote at the ZBA? That would be correct. If you vote at night because you are the liaison to the Zoning Board of Appeals from the Planning Commission, you cannot vote on the same project in both places. So if you vote tonight, which I would encourage you to do, an alternate would take your place on the Zoning Board of Appeals. So in what case would I vote at the ZBA then? If you decline, you, you just, you're hearing this case, you would not okay. vote at the ZBA. Okay, gotcha. Um, so one question uh, in regards to the, the rear yard. So as I understand it, utilities have to be behind the rear contour. That we're not running an issue. Line. So we're not running an issue that they're bumping out past this plane. No, they're, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Patrick, but they're still 30 some feet from Oh, the, easily, yeah. Yes. The driveway itself is approximately 30 feet yeah, from the, the garage door. The, the building envelope, and I'm going to be well, actually, the building envelope is something like akin to what I'm trying to do here. Okay. So you can you kind of get where I'm saying. Okay, so we're, we're safe. If, yeah. if I may for a second, do you, do you mind? Yeah, no, go ahead. I, I agree with you. As you point that out, the rear contour, because I know we argued this for a while. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to get I thought it went around it. back from the house. I didn't think it the described neighbor, across the, because... To, to kind of put the on this, this neighbor here does not object to that in any case. Okay. okay. <laughs> and and, 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 and if it turns different. out that he changes his mind, they'll work that out. And and I okay. apologize. This I think that's a great solution. I'm, this is more semantics of the planning commission. Yeah, no, that's I, just my curiosity. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so I guess first and foremost, thank you for you know coming back with a with a complete redesign. Um, I think your house looks great. I, uh, my other question was. I know the neighbor to the south, Todd Sachs, he spoke about uh, how proud it was to the road. And you mentioned it has been moved back. Mm -hmm. How far has it moved back since last presentation? On the Sachs side, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're approximately five feet further back. Yeah, that side. five feet further back, and we're actually further back than the existing house on that side. Okay, gotcha. I know that was a, a, a concern that I, I think both neighbors were. Yeah, and we, and we, I, we've spoke to. Todd Sachse as well. He's okay. Fully. So we've spoken to eight different neighbors: Ralph McDowell, Steve Berman, anyone who was here that said something. 
our architect sat down with them, or I reached out. We sent the tree study to Steve Berman. Gotcha. So whatever we knew about, we addressed. Gotcha. Yeah, I think the tremendous effort in the landscaping design is, is definitely appreciated too. Um, no, I think I think it looks great. The the only thing I'm really struggling with is that eyebrow window, but uh, it, that just it feels feels off to me. <laughs> but that's it. Other than that. Couple questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I, I see two different figures for the overage. One is three seventy three, and one is four sixty three. I believe we are now at 373. Okay, That's what I because mean. on the... Yeah, no, I get it. I know where you're looking. Okay, so it's 373? It's 373. Okay. Um, I, let me echo the comments. I appreciate the, uh, the yeoman's effort that went into accommodating the ordinance and the, and the comments that we made last time in terms of size and, and particularly, again, the... Um, extraordinary effort that went into the um, tree preservations and the evaluation um, that that is is greatly appreciated um, it, and um, George's comments about the criteria uh, pink and I advise you uh, hand you a pamphlet that says here's what you've got to meet in order to meet the um, standards at the zoning ordinance that doesn't depend upon the individual owner's use or intended use of the property. It's basically got to rise out of the characteristics of the property. Um, but I'll leave the details to, um, to Hank and to uh, experienced architects to explain that more carefully. Um, to, and I like the plan very much to just two additional comments, and they have nothing to do with the plan itself. Um, part of what we received was a confidential draft relating to certain parts of this, at least it was in my package. Um, by the nature of the fact that this is a public meeting, there's no such thing as a confidential anything. Um, at least that's what the materials are. That's that understood. Mr. Cascade and I had. Uh, okay. He thought right. the facts might be important. Okay, all right, it's, it's appreciated, but I think that at least most of it more, um, more appropriately addresses the zoning board. Um, and, and they'll get the same package. Okay, all right. And finally, what is, what is a mountable curb? <laughs> mountable <laughs> curb, okay. So uh, for, for Sheldon's edification, there's a couple different kinds of curbs. There's a box curb, which goes straight up, straight down. Okay, there's a mountable curb, which is what you're seeing in Huntington Woods, which has a much softer flow, so it can actually be driven over. But it clearly delineates the edge of the right of way from the beginning of the roadway. So, as a result, we're putting a lot of those in, and when you put that in, the driveway matches up to that, and we don't have to do the curb cuts, which are famous primarily in the center section of, of Huntington Woods, the box curbs. So as a result, when we can put in new streets and we can put in new curbs, typically that's what they're going for. They didn't tell LaSalle because they, LaSalle had a, um, it was one of the older streets in Huntington Woods, so they tried to keep with what was there for that purpose. But mountable curbs are, are a thing that we're using in Huntington Woods. Um, it's great. Uh, people like them. It also kind of spreads the street out just a little bit more. And it, from people banging off the curb, doesn't happen. Anymore. So there's no change in profile between the, the curb that's in front of the easement and the curb that's at the driveway? Or is there a change in profile? There's a change in profile, definitely. From a curb that would be like a standard box curb to a mountable curb, um, pardon my rudimentary drawings, but here's a box curb. Yeah, Here, I understand. Here's a what's mountable in front curb. of the, 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 the grass area? It's there the would easement. be nothing other than an edge of the mountable curb and then grass. Okay. To answer Sheldon's question, yes, it's identical. I have yes. them in front of my house. So what's in front of your driveway is the same as what's in front of your grass. Right. You don't, and that's you what don't you're going to have on the side of your house. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, 
Aaron's in the middle of construction. He's on wearing yeah. shoes. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, those are the only comments I had. Uh, it's a nice plan, and I appreciate the considerable effort um, that went into it. Um, I do not speak for the zoning board. I really don't have anything new to add. Uh, I think they've all said it. Uh, I think it, it's wonderful, um, and look forward to having you in the neighborhood. Thank you. Um, I just want to echo what the other commissioners have said. Um, uh, as I went through the plans, I was very impressed and pleased that you really touched off all the boxes. I appreciate that you took to heart what we talked about last time, and um, you know, you dealt with. Design-wise, the massing, uh, there's a nice division of space in your in your overall ar architectural plan. Um, your proportions make sense in the design. Um, it's a nice use of materials, and I really appreciate how you've, you've managed the scale. You've managed um, to take care of the trees and the environment around there. Um, you know, I had a kind of a funny thought today, um, probably because I was watching Downton Abbey yesterday, but you know, Huntington Woods is supposedly bottled after a city in England. And I was just sort of thinking to myself, you know, these larger homes with more property, they're like the manors in Huntington Woods. They're, they're the ones that sort of maintain the integrity of our environment and our way of life. So I thank you for that um, because those trees are just so very important to us, those old oaks in that sand base. And... Um, um, I also appreciate that that you listen to Mr. Saxe and you step back the house a little ways and I also appreciate your attention to detail with water runoff, your French drains and so forth. I think that's fabulous. So for me, you've, you've checked off all the boxes. Um, so I thank you for that. It's been a real pleasure. Um, so we come to the point now where um, we need to have someone make a motion. Is anybody prepared to do that? Keeping in mind that we have to um, make note of the fact that it will uh, require a variance. So. Uh, so motion you're looking for yeah. is to approve, subject to approval by the ZBA? That is correct. I will make that motion. Second. Okay. All in favor? Oh, is there any discussion? No discussion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No. Okay. Uh, Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Madam you Chair. Cascade um, Manor. <laughs> <laughs> I see a new story coming. <laughs> Madam Chair, at this point, the only thing that you have left on the agenda is the last public participation. Other than that, you would be ready for a motion to adjourn unless anybody has something they would wish to contribute. Okay. Is there uh, anybody uh, from the public who would like to say anything else or contribute anything or have any questions oh, seeing nobody who's coming forward we'll close public participation and now we just need a motion to adjourn so moved second all in favor <laughs> okay. thank you madam chair do you guys want to plan too bad no. uh,